and the Abominus Gravy Train rolls on with the Transformers Power of the Primes Wave 2 Hunger, the second member for that combining team and the leader of the group, who I've also added several custom paint apps to. You see, out of package, he is an excellent homage to the original classic G1 toy. But I like my little plastic robots to have animation accuracy and that's why I ended up adding several apps to this guy both in this mode and his combined mode. We're gonna look at everything to do with this guy and the changes that I made to him in the latest Got Ba True review. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Gotbot. As always, please like, comment, share, and of course, I'm going to say subscribe. Why not? It helps me a bunch. It is very appreciated. Check out Machinery of Man, the Everything Factor, and me everywhere. This is Hunger. You know what? The original figure released in G1, I thought was really a standard for what everything should be in G1. It was fantastic for the time. And this dude really continues that great tradition because he's fantastic too. He's effective as a robot with uh, mostly excellent articulation. In fact, he even has a piece of articulation that I wouldn't expect on a Voyager class figure, but I'm happy to see. He's a fine two-headed dragon animal thing, I don't know. And he's a great torso. It takes a little bit to get him in torso mode, but once he's there, it works out really nicely. Especially with the changes that I made to him, or so I think. I mean, obviously the call is yours. Maybe you love the accuracy to the G1 toy. Maybe that's your call. Either way you cut it, whether you kind of do some tweaks on it, on him or not, he's pretty fantastic, always around. Yes, he's not super fancy, it's a Combiner Wars figure. It is what it is, but it's definitely one of the more successful torsos, and I suppose we really shouldn't be surprised, since a lot of this guy is kind of based on the mold used for Silverbolt and Scattershot and Cyclonus. Except I think this guy pulls it off just a little bit better. And a little bit more securely. I dig him. But you know what? Enough from me. Let's head over to the table and take a closer look at this guy. And as mentioned, I am excited to finally be getting the last of the great Decepticon combiners together. Now I know that people will make an argument for things that appeared in the Unicron Trilogy, in the original R.I.D. Some might even point out some of the kind of creative combiners we have, but being the G1 kid that I was and seeing that original program when I was six, seven, eight years old, the way I look at things is like this. There's an argument to be made for characters like Monstructor or Piranacon. Even Dino King, Leo Kaiser, for example. Some of the ones that appeared just in Toy, some of the ones that appeared, of course, in the kind of Japanese continuation of G1. But in my growing up and in my realm, we had Devastator, who I have a representation of. We had Bruticus, Menasaur, who I have representations of. Granted, Menasaur is a little wishy-washy. And we have Predakin who, of course, we're getting a Titan-class version of if you're down for that, but there's been ever so many versions of him. I have the one that works for me and my collection. And the last great holdout has been Abominus. And it's fantastic to at least now have the torso of this guy, although I already do have one of the limbs and took a look at that a little while ago. We'll talk about that shortly. But for now, let's start off and take a look at the box. And we have a dandy box. I wish that his legs could sort of move this way. I feel like we're missing a hinge to sort of get that look. They work well, but one more hinge would have been nice. We have Abominus over here on the side. 
very toy accurate, important to note. Over here, of course, we have the prime symbols, and we have the kind of bio and product shot on the back. This is extremely, this coloration is extremely toy accurate with his fuchsia face and silver visor. The dude is wearing cool guy sunglasses. The only thing that really sort of threw me off here was that I felt like the dark gray on his forearm continued too far up his bicep. Overall though, this is pretty cool and it's a box, it is what it is. If you're a fan of instructions, well, hey, good news for you, he comes with them, if it's any use to you. And naturally, the most important thing is the ever popular collector card. Great artwork, this is Prima Hunger, and with the power of Prima, he fights famine. Who knew that he was so socially and civically minded? I'm not even going to pretend that I didn't almost forget about this. It's his Enigma combination. I had it hid away. It is a little fuchsia block with yellow. It is hollow. It is unnecessary, but hey, it's something that was included. And he comes with two of these fuchsia colored bucklers, or as I like to call them, feet, because they're feet for the combined mode. Um, the color, I think, is pretty accurate for the combined mode. I wish we had two fists that were the same thing. You can, of course, put a Prime Master in there, or you can take his Enigma, and that can go in his foot buckler. It's a foot. I don't care what anybody says. That's what it is to me, and they, there are two of them, and that's good because he should have two feet. And if you thought that you were going to get through today without seeing feet, applied to arms, then you were sadly mistaken, my friend. I have one of his bucklers over on the arm over here. The other one I'll put on this side. We have a little round slot that goes on over a circular peg here on the forearm. And if you want, you can put that on. I don't know what a buckler is. Is it a shield? Is it supposed to be toe blasters? I, I don't... I don't know. I mean, it's cool that they can integrate. Don't get me wrong. It's great because everybody hates parts forming. But for me, they're not going to stay on there and they will be feet that will be held off to the side until I need them for combined mode. So, taking them off. Let's see how this dude... Compares with a few other figures. Most notably, the only other team member that I have. Of course, I'm talking about Ripper Snapper. They look great together. One thing I do want to note before I, I talk about and kind of give a final grade to his paint apps and stuff is you'll notice that there's a foil sticker. This guy, Hunger, has a few of those foil stickers. Some are more successful than others. But we have one over here that's a Decepticon symbol. We have a different Decepticon symbol over here. And this guy, though I didn't mention it in his review, he actually has a tampo like that on the top of his head. And it's indicative of the old rub symbols when you would have this black square and you would use, you would rub it and the heat from your finger would show if you had an Autobot or a Decepticon. As if you didn't already know. Here he is with his wave mate, Alita One, who I did a bunch of custom paint work on as well. I didn't show the bucklers on her arms in her review because I had these pieces put up there, the kind of shoulder pauldron pieces, but you could put the bucklers up there as well. I, I think you can see the bucklers applied in the schematic uh, of her instruction booklet, which I did show. I I'm never going to apply the bucklers to her shoulders ever but they would go in the same kind of peg holes that are on her shoulders where these two little blasters are now placed. And the blasters are more accurate. She is, she's something. She is definitely something. Taking her out of it. And just for fun, why not show him next to Grimlock, who I looked at in episode 345, and we're going to be talking about the Dinobots coming up pretty soon. Now I mentioned that fresh out of package, this guy is definitely a perfect 10 
for a representation of the G1 toy. He's excellent. With the apps that I added, the red visor, the kind of gloss mix of white and gray that's on his face, on his biceps, so now the dark gray doesn't go up as far, and even applied in one other location, I still think the guy's a nine, so that's what we're going to go with for now. Articulation. The articulation is pretty great for the guy. The truth is it was great for the G1 as well, for the era that it was. We have a pretty effective torso when we get to that. We have a fine two-headed dragon thing. When we get to that, it's really kind of chock full of articulation. And in robot mode, what do we have? Well, we have the head that can go left and right. If you kind of detach it from here, it can sort of look up and down a little bit. We have a nice soft ratchet for the shoulder. Fantastic, actually. The arms have a 90 degree elbow, bicep swivel. They can go out to the side. By the way, if you are thinking of painting the biceps like I did, very thin coat. Because when you take this out to the side, this corner does like to kind of scrape off the paint. So very thin coat applied a couple of times. He does have a bit of a backpack because of the chest of Abominus, but it's certainly nothing egregious at all. He doesn't have anything at the waist. That's a bit of a shame. He does have legs way out to the side. He can do full splits. They can come forward. They can go back. He has a double knee, which is fantastic. The toes can tilt up and down. The heel can tilt up and down. And we have ankle pivot to the side. I'm, I'm really happy with it. I really am. I mean, in terms of the paint apps for the guy, I'm really happy with them. I love them. Yes, there's some foil stickers, but like the blue is a tampo, the chest is paint. Now, I thought that his waist piece here was also paint, but I don't think so. I think that the purple fuchsia color is applied to the chest and these spiky pieces. I think that that's all the kind of light gray plastic. And I think the waist was light gray plastic because I actually have some paint rub right there on the waist. I don't really care about it. It's on a hinge and this kind of comes down and covers it. So it's not a big deal to me. It might be to you. I'm going to say that his articulation, again, is a solid nine. So the paint apps for what I did to make it more animation accurate is a nine. The articulation, a nine. The guy is a solid figure, there's no doubt about it. The conversion will look at him going to dragon mode, I'm calling it dragon, I assume it's a dragon, and then we'll go to torso mode because that's the way we're going to leave him until we put him in abominus mode. And none of these conversions are challenging. One little thing that I really did like is that you could flip this spike up over the knee here because in his robot mode, really the whole front of the leg was kind of just a white color. So I like that that kind of flips up to hide one of the spikes and it fills in the slot where the combiner connection is. So how do we convert this guy to his dragon mode? Well, we begin by flipping down that little piece and flipping down that little piece. We come up to his chest and we bring the tail out and angle the chest forward, we push the head inside, close the chest up once we have the head inside. There we go. And as we bring the tail back, we push on these little spiky bits right here. And it kind of makes different spiky bits protrude down here. We bring this all the way back and we put it in place. Next. You're going to take the shoulders and angle them back and angle them all the way back. And you're going to take the claws that are on the back of his arm and flip them forward. Same thing. Angle this one all the way back. The claws on his hand, hand wrist, flip forward. And this is kind of what you have now. 
close up his heel and his toe and his heel and his toe because that gives you the two heads of the dragon mode. Flip out the little front leg from the side and bring it down. Do the same thing on the other side. Flip out the little front leg and bring it down. And boom, in the end, there you have the two-headed monster mode for hunger. And I wanted to get in closer here so we can take kind of a bit of a glorious look at this. Uh, it's pretty fantastic. I mean, the arms, or the back legs, I guess in this case, really retain all of the functionality of the arms. They can rotate all the way around. Uh, we can go way out to the side like that if you really want. You still have the elbow that, that now serves as a knee. The little claws are down here. These ones on the front, they can go forward and back, but that's really about all that they do. The heads can go down and up because you still have all the functionality of the legs. The thigh swivel gives us the ability to turn the head to the side. The ankle tilt lets us turn just the head to the side. It would have been nice if, I don't know, if maybe there was one more hinge above the knee or something, but I can see why you can't really include it. You may have noticed that we have Per, well, I guess kind of a fuchsia color in here and a sticker out here. I took the stickers off from the inside. There's a reason for that. We'll talk about it shortly. But really, everything functions quite nicely on the guy. I really can't complain about it. This is really quite accurate. And it was easy to get into. That's the other thing. It was so simple to get into. Okay, so we're going to back things up. We're going to put him in his torso mode, which also has a bunch of custom paint work done on it for animation accuracy. And that's kind of how we will leave this dude. So we want to turn this guy into a torso, right? That's what we're going to endeavor to do anyway. It's probably easiest if we begin from the back legs here and then work our way kind of up to the top. For back here, uh, actually, I'm going to do one other thing right now. I'm going to actually go to his tummy and lift the abominous head out, just so that's out. And we'll leave it there for now. We're going to stand the guy up and straighten out his back legs or his arms, if you will. They will actually kind of tab into place. We swivel them around and do the same thing here. We pivot that to the front. We bring the claw and the hand all the way up on the back of the leg. And we turn him front on. I did add more of the paint right here. This was also all dark. And by rights, the legs of Abominus should have these sections be that light gray. And we should actually have the heads of the two-headed dragon down right here. We don't have that because instead of his legs forming the combiner legs, we have his arms forming the combiner legs. So I'm just going to reposition myself here now that we got the lower body done so that we can see the rest of this guy pretty clearly. And this should be able to serve our purposes even though the kind of heads of the dragon motor are a little out of frame at the moment, but that's okay. We'll get them in frame. You bring this down, you close up the mouth and the jaw if you had it open. You flip the entire head inside the leg. And then you have to kind of bring the leg down and get it into position. What we have is two little notches on the dark gray plastic, really kind of on his hip. And we have two little starts on the light gray plastic right here. They're going to lock in there. You need to position the knee properly, which means kind of bending it at the appropriate hinge because that's double hinged. And you'll know it. I think it's the further one in here because it needs to be able to line up such that these pieces will lock into those slots like that. Once you have that locked in, you can take the front kind of dragon leg and bring it up. There's a little notch at the tip of the toe that goes into a little rectangular slot up here, just above the pinhole. And that's one side of Abominus finished. On the other side, we do the exact same thing. We flip that in. We bring this down and 
tap those into place and then we take the toe section and bring it up over. We open out this section and we angle it all the way up. And this is exactly why I removed the red foil stickers because I wanted to have as much as I could the kind of whole fuchsia purple chest shield mimicked. And we had it here, we have paint here that's not quite a match, and then this isn't quite a match, but it's all pretty close and cohesive. This over here was a color that I mixed with uh, a shiny fire engine red, a metallic magenta, a little bit of kind of a sky blue, and a little bit of white. It was a difficult color to try and match. I think I've done okay. That being said, we have one piece left and that is the combiner head. You already pulled it out of his tummy, you bring it up on this hinge and you bring it forward. forward. When you bring it forward you have a little lip right at the front and that goes into a slot right here on the chest piece. So you bring that, oh and I should also note this, you have two dark gray slots there. They slide into pieces on the side of this dark gray piece when you bring it up. So everything sort of solidifies in there quite nicely. Push that in. Bring this forward. Snap that piece in. And there you go. Last but not least, you take his two antenna pieces and you bring them up and in the end, boom, here we have the torso, oh, and you take the tail and fold that up on the back. Now, in the end, there you go, you have the torso mode of Abominus. Now, if your style is the G1 figures, then hey, the way he comes out of package is perfect for you. It didn't quite work for me. In fact, as a kid, it used to really bother me that the toy, and I only, I didn't even have the limbs, I only had the torso, but it always bothered me that the toy had a, a white combiner head and a kind of purpley fuchsia face and yellow eyes. Because on my screen, what we had was a purpley fuchsia colored head. We had the whitish grayish face and his eyes, of course, being a Decepticon, were red. So that's exactly what I did here in an attempt to kind of mimic that better. I love how it turned out, considering how challenging it was to try and mix a color that was anything remotely close to what we were looking for. If you have been thinking about doing the same thing, I'm telling you now, it's not real easy to find a magenta or fuchsia that matches. As a matter of fact, sometimes, like I actually took the foot piece with me and compared it to several paints and thought a couple of times that I had struck gold and I didn't. In the end, I could not find the match at all. I had to end up mixing something. That being said, this is a pretty great torso. Uh, the whole chest abdomen section is secure. I think the legs are going to be just fine. I totally dig this. And Really, the only bit of backpack we have is the tailpiece folded up. That's it. That's it. It's so, it's such a clean torso. I absolutely dig it. Transformation to all these modes is really easy, but fun at the same time. You can convert them between all these modes and enjoy him as a robot, a torso, or as the two-headed dragon. It's, I think, pretty great. And a lot of these have a location, of course, for the Enigma combination that's ridiculous, and you see the Enigma sticking out. The reason I had pretty much forgotten about this guy is because his Enigma, you open up that little chest section there, you place the Enigma in, and then this closes right up over it, and you can even forget that you own one. I love it. Transformation of 10, he was a nine. The guy's a nine and a half. It's, I think, a great combiner torso, a great entry, and one that I really, really been looking forward to. 
And of course, by now, you know that we have him left in torso mode because the next time we see him, he will be combined to make the huge gestalt known as Abominus. And boy, do I feel like I've been waiting a long time to kind of complete my Decepticon, Decepticon combiners. Certainly looking forward to it, and what a great start he and Ripper Snapper, for that matter, make. I wouldn't pass this guy over because he's a fine figure in his own right, and I think he's going to make a solid core for an overdue combiner. I said a long time ago that really the Combiner Wars line had some wins, it had some losses. It started out super strong with Superion, and it ended rather nicely with both Bruticus and Computron. Though some might say that after that you had Leo Kaiser. Probably. Technically, I guess this is a continuation of that, sorta, kinda. And I really think that this guy is going to work out so well that in terms of being a send-off to really the core combiners, I don't mean the made-up ones. I don't even mean the new ones like Victorian. I mean the core combiners that fans of the franchise would know from 30 plus years ago. I think that this is going to end up being a great send-off. Anyway, let me know what you think about this guy. Do you like him? Do you not? You know that I love to have a chit-chat with you and hear your thoughts. As always, I'm going to say, please, hit that subscribe button. It helps me tremendously. Thanks for giving me some of your extremely valuable time. I do know how important it is. And I very much look forward to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit right here inside the videos.